Hello everyone, my name is Asia Ray, and I'm going to share with you um, some recent events that the Lord has showed me about heaven and hell. Um, I'm going to start with hell first. Um, a few weeks ago, um, probably a few days before no, no, uh, Thanksgiving, um, I had went into a deep sleep, and when I went into a deep sleep, um, the Lord took me outside my body, and when he took me outside my body, I saw myself in a large field, and I could see all my family members and, and myself, um, and other people. It was like a like it was like a um, like a whole bunch of fest festivity festivities going on. And um, next thing I know, I heard thunder, and when I ho heard thunder, I saw all these horses coming from out the sky. Um, and the horses they had garments. Some of the horses were white, beautiful white horses with um, with white wings. Some of the horses were black. Some of the horses were white and had um, like. Um, black and white garment on it and they began snatching people up and people began to uh, start running and you know anytime you know God didn't give us a spirit of fear so anytime you're living a life and you're fearful that means there's some type of um, unbalance with you and God or you're not in a place where you need to be with God because there should be no reason why I was even running and I was going to church every Sunday and still going to church every Sunday now and and things like that but I didn't fully uh, surrender my life um, and so what happened, the Lord, um, like I say, I went to a deep sleep, I came outside my body, and he showed me the festivities and things that was going on, and I was walking some, and then I heard a loud noise, and it was like thunder, when I heard the thunder, I saw all these horses coming down, and they started snatching up people, and one snatched me up, and the one that snatched me up was white, but it had some black spots on it, which represents, you know, spot blemishes, wrinkle. And I was taken to this place, and this place that I was taken to, it looked like a subway station. And there was a left-hand side, and there was a right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, um, it was a long train. And on the right-hand side, there was a long train. Now, there was people, there were so many people on the left-hand side of the train. I mean, so many people. And um, these people, um, they were Christians. And so as I was on the train, I mean, the train was so long. I mean, as far as I can see, as far as I can see and, and hear, all I could hear and see was people. And I, as the train began to start moving, I looked outside the window. And when I looked outside the window, um, the Lord began to show me clips of my life. And everything in my life was good except one situation that I was in. I was previously married. I've been divorced now about two or three years now. But I was previously married. And um, the person I was involved with was my ex-husband's husband. And he was still legally married. Although he had been separated from his wife about four or five years now, he was still legally married. And when I saw, when I looked outside the window... I heard the Lord say adulterer and I and I, I turned my head back and I was facing the bump on the train where I was in. It reminds me of like a um uh like like bumps with a whole bunch of people in it. So then the train started moving. As the train started moving, I looked back outside the window again and I looked out outside the window um where um I had got snatched from and it didn't look like the regular grass that it once was. Everything started withering and it was turning to fire. And when I looked on the right hand side, there were only four or five people. And as the train started moving the left hand side where I was, um, I started feeling heat. And it started getting warmer and warmer. And then as it started moving more, I started feeling hopeless. I started feeling lost. I started feeling confused. And I'm like, God, what's going on? So I looked outside the window again. When I looked out the window again, the Lord has shown me repenting all the time. I will always repent. But here's what God revealed to me in that in, in the same sense while I was there on my way to hell. You see, it's a difference between true repentance and a worldly repentance. When you truly repent for something, that means you stop what you're doing and you give it up. You don't do it no more. A worldly repentance is when you constantly say, okay, God, I repent, but I'm going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. For example, okay, God, I robbed this bank. I repent. I'm sorry. You know what, God? I need some more money. Let me go rob this bank again. That's not true repentance. So as a train start moving, you know, uh, as it start moving and going, I start feeling heat. I mean, I can feel the connection with the heat from this tongue. Um, and next thing I know, um, as it start uh, moving again, and it, it kept the train kept moving and moving and moving. I started feeling more hope, more hopeless, more lost, all those things. And I started feeling fearful. I started feeling very fearful. Next thing I know, the whole train was dumped over, and I came back inside my body about five o'clock that morning. So the next morning when I had got up, um, I got on my knees and I repented for everything that I had done. I apologized to my ex-husband. The relationship that I was in, I gave it up, man. And I surrendered my life completely. God, I said, God, you know what? I marry you. So this ring that I represent, that I have my finger now, represent purity. It represent my marriage with God. And if it's God's will that I, you know, get married again, then I get married again. But until that happens, I'm going to stay with Jesus. So then, um, after, after the Lord had bought my body five o'clock that morning, 
you know, I, I repented. Um, I apologize to everybody. I need to apologize to when So about uh, two days later, the Lord took me to another deep sleep. And when he took me to another deep sleep, I came outside my body again. And this time I was taken to another train station. And I saw two tunnels, one to the left and one to the right. This time there was a man. He had a white piece of paper in his hand. And on his paper there were lists of names. And he called my list and he told me, he called my name and he told me to come forward. And when I came forward, he walked me to the right hand side of the train. He said, you're no longer on this left hand side, you're on the right hand side. So when I went on the right hand side, when I went on the right hand side, um, the train, it was so narrow and so small, it was only big enough for two people to really even uh, get in the row. It was a narrow train with bronze seats. And when I first got on the train, I was facing the tunnel. Now, as I was facing the tunnel, if I was, if I was in the, if I was me facing the tunnel on the right hand side, the man told me, he said, no, you're no longer facing this way. I was in the eighth seat facing it backwards. He said, now turn away this, turn around this way. So when I turned around facing the other way, I was a third person. God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, that's the number of God. And he told us to get off the train. When I got off the train, I had, um, he opened up the gate and I went in the gate. And where I was at, I was in Abraham's bosom. It was like a city of God, like heaven. I knew it was heaven. And I saw this beautiful lady there. She had on, she had on all white. And the people there, I didn't know them, but I knew them by the spirit of God. I was able to recognize them by the spirit. And they were so friendly and so nice. And they were all happy to see me. And this lady, she touched my hand. She was so beautiful. Had beautiful long hair and, and beautiful skin. And her hands were soft. And she touched my hand like this. Her hand was like a feather. And when I looked back behind me, there was a slip between heaven and hell. And when I looked back, I saw a lot of my family members in there. I was in Abraham's bosom, but they were in hell. And one of the very, one of the very things that I saw while they was in there, the main thing I saw was sexual immorality, sexual immorality. And the reason, and I saw fornication. I saw all those things. God had shown me why all those people was in there. And I saw them land out like a slab of rigs on these big old brimstone, these big old rocks. And the only way that I was even able to identify them was because the, the, the fire was so hot. I was only able to see like an outline of their face and I could hear the screams. The screams that's in hell are, no, are, are in, it's not even comparable to the screams that's um, um, here on earth. A person can get shot five times here on earth and, and nothing, I'm telling you, there's nothing that compares to screams that are in hell. The best thing that I can tell anybody to do is surrender your life completely to God if, if, you know, if you're in any relationship and it's not pure, get out of it because it's going to lead you straight to hell. And so I've surrendered my life to God, I've given up everything. There's nothing in this world that any man or any woman can offer me to make me give up my salvation with God. My greatest desire is to be with God. And so I'm here to minister to a lot of you all. If you're in a relationship, um, and there's sexual immorality, and that consists of, um, you could be touching somebody, there could be pornography, it could be all of those things. Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention too, when I was on the train, I heard a voice as the train was moving, as I started feeling fearful and stuff like that, I heard a loud voice. He said, I called you to be apostles. He said, I called you all to be apostles. He said, you very well knew the way. That was the first time I was um, on my way to hell. But the second time I made it in, I was in heaven this time. This time I made it in. And so, um, you know, I encourage you all, if you're in a relationship and if it's not pure. And some people say, well, I'm in a relationship. I'm getting ready to get married. So it's okay for us to live together. No, it's not okay because every time you don't repent, your name is being blotted out the Lamb's Book of Life. You know, you may not believe my testimony of what I'm telling you right now, but I'm telling you, each and every time that you do not repent, your name is blotted out the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't care how saved you are. I don't care how much of the Holy Ghost you have. If you do not repent, true repentance and stop what you are doing. And if you are outside the will of God, you will not make it in. Um, the best thing anybody can ever do, especially if you're single, to be in a marriage with God. It's always good to have a life of true repentance. Always love. Always forgive. Holiness is still right. So I made up my mind. I surrendered my life. And see, the thing is, I, had, I was going to church every Sunday. I was shouting. I was praising God. And I still had the Holy Ghost. But I still didn't have true repentance. So it didn't even matter. And the thing is about hell, which God was showing me, is you don't know which spot or glimpse or reason will, will get you in it. It could be the slightest sin. A lot of people say, well, homosexuality is going to get you in, or, or this right here, or God don't like this. No, God loves us all. It's just a sin he does not like. God, he's looking for true worshipers, those who will worship him in spirit and truth. God, well, we have to present our life to him as worship. He wants our life to be worshiped to him. You see, our life does not belong to us. It's not even about us. It's about God. All the glory goes to him. He, we, he doesn't owe us anything. He's done enough. You know, so the least we can do is surrender our lives to him. And another thing too, you know, people think when people die or when somebody shot up or something that they're resting in peace. Everybody is not resting in peace. I'm telling you, there were so many Christians on this train. And as far as I can see, this train never stopped. It's never in the train to hell. And all it does all day long is dump bodies over to hell. 
That's all it does. That's all it does. Every single day, it jumps bodies over to hell. You guys may not believe what I'm telling you. One day, you will have your very own testimony. But as for me at my house, so I will serve God. And I will be a slave to Him all the days of my life. Because after my experience with hell the first time, and after being on my way there, I thank God that He did not allow me to stay in my sin. I thank God. God is good. He is so good, you know. And see, my actually my first time with um experience in heaven was in 2013. Um, I came outside my body and I was walking with Jesus and he was telling me why I had to go through everything I went through in my life. And it's like I was young all over again. And I remember me and Jesus walking on a, on a long, narrow road. A very long, narrow road, but the road was golden. So I encourage each of you now, you know, if you're not saved, get saved. Um, there is going to be a rapture. Jesus Christ is coming. Um, there's a mansion waiting with my name on it. Um, the Lord has also revealed to me that he's going to show me my mansion. Um, he's he's going to reveal to me he's going to show me my mansion. So I look forward to seeing that. Um, but like I said, the second time that God showed me heaven and hell, this time I was on the right hand side and not the left, and my name was written. It was written. It was written in the book, and this time I made it an end. And it was I'm telling you, it was a slip between heaven and hell. I couldn't go where my family were, and they couldn't come where I was at all. It was just like Lazarus in the Bible, Lazarus and the rich man. So I encourage you all to surrender your life to Christ. Um if you're single, uh the best place you ever be is in a marriage with God. Um uh, you're not losing out on anything. Men, um, I know I hear a lot of men out here, worldly men saying, well, and even church men, even the ones that's in church, you know, they, they sleep around and they fornicate, they do all these things, man. You have no idea what you're doing. Women, same thing. You have no idea what you're doing. The best place you could ever be is in a relationship with God and a pure marriage with God and holiness and, and walking up right in righteousness because that's what God's looking for. He's looking for a, a, a pure people, a holy people. Holiness is still right. This is not even about religion, man. This is about surrendering. I've surrendered my life. I've, I've given up everything. I don't want nothing this world has to offer me unless God want me to have it. I've surrendered my life to him completely. After my experience with heaven and hell, especially hell, my life will never be the same. I tell people it's a difference when you're having a dream about it, and it's another difference when you come outside your body and you're there. The first time I didn't make it in, I was on my way to hell because of the adulterous relationship that I was in. I should have known better. But because of the desires of my own flesh, I yielded to that. But I thank God that he loved me enough and gave me the opportunity to get it right. So when I came outside, my head, my body fell flat that morning. I repented. I got on my knees. I repented. And I gave up everything. I gave up everything because I don't want it. Because it's not of God. And ladies and men, I'm here to tell you. Anytime that people, sometimes people say, well, God sent this person, this person for me. One thing about God, he will never contradict himself. When God sends you that man or when God sends you that woman, it's going to be pure. Why would God send you somebody that's tainted? God will never send you somebody that's tainted, man. I don't care what you say. You can never agree. You can never get God to agree with sin. God will never contradict himself. Women, when God sends you your modern day Boaz, you won't know that it's from God because he's, first of all, it's not going to be tainted. If somebody really loved you, if you're in a relationship with a woman or man really loved you, number one, they would not be trying to sleep with you. They would not be trying to move in with you. But if none of those things will happen, they don't want to keep it pure. Why? Because their spirit is in alignment with God. When you meet somebody their spirit is in alignment with God, they're going to do the right things. Then when you love somebody, you won't say, you know what? This is not right. We don't need to fornicate. We don't need to do this. Because you know why? I love you enough and I care about you so enough and I love God more that I'm not going to walk you or walk or sleep with you and, and see ourselves on our way to hell. That's not where you want to be. The best place you could ever be right now is in a marriage with God. I'm not trying to scare nobody. Young lady, I'm telling you the truth. You may not agree with what I'm saying. You may not believe it. But I'm telling you, one day you might just have your very own testimony. I'm telling you heaven is real and hell is real. I have experienced it firsthand. I'm telling you, it was people laid up like slabs of ribs in hell. And they were sitting on these big old brimstones. And when I looked up, there was like a, um, um, uh, like a, like a uh, scroll that came down. And the first thing I saw to why they were in there was sexual immorality. The one thing you don't want is a soul tie. After I had gave up the relationship and I started going through my deliverance process, this was one of the, um, I mean, worst felt pains I have ever experienced spiritually. I felt so broken. God had to literally restore me. And so, you know, we could, I created my own trial. So that's what I had to go through. But thank God for bringing me out, for purging me and delivering me. Now, you know, I'm cleaned up and, you know, now I'm not playing with this walk. Oh God, see some people God to show them or a dream or whatever. You see, for me, it took for God to, to take, take me to hell and back. That's what it took for me. I don't know what it may take for you. 
But I encourage each one of you to surrender your life to Christ. Everybody's not resting in peace. I'm telling you, there were so many Christians on this train. This is an everlasting train of hell and it never stops. It never stops. There were so many people in hell, especially Christians. Christians. When I looked on the four or five, the four or five people on the right hand side, the first time I was in hell, these people were like they were people who had just came to Christ. One girl, she was an atheist. Mm -hmm. And she repented and she even made it in. Yeah. But the second time I made it in, I made it in. And I was in Abraham's bosom. And like I said, I was I, I saw so many of my family members in hell, man. And so I, I tell people, you know, my, my life will never be the same. After what has happened to me, my life will never be the same at all. People look at me like something is wrong with me. No, there's nothing wrong with me. If I'm walking up right with God and living the way I'm supposed to, and repent like I'm supposed to, what happened? You see, what I, here's another thing what I have realized. People confess things out their mouth. Oh, I love God and God, and this is an excuse I hear a lot. I, I used to even say, well, God knows my heart. Yes, God does know your heart too. But at the same time, your heart posture has got to mouth match what your mouth is confessing. Your heart posture has got to match what your heart is confessing. God knows your heart, but he also said, he said, those that love me will keep my commandments. Now, how much do you love God? Do you love him enough to give up everything that's impure, that's not like him? God is not a filthy God. He's a clean God. And I'm going to tell you something. In heaven, there's not even a speck of dirt at all. There's no dirt there. So how much do you really love God? Do you love him enough to give up everything that's not like him? Do you love him enough to be clean and pure and free and to walk a holy life? Do you love him enough to surrender your life? Me? I surrender my life. I'm not boasting to myself, but I'm telling you. I'm, the, the reason why I'm ministering to you are because God wants me to. Because I'm telling you. Once you go through, once you get in that train, go through that tunnel, the tunnel is the last thing you will ever see. And the fire is the last thing you will forever feel. I'm telling you. Fornication, lust, adultery, idolatry, anything that's not like God. Yeah? Anything that's not like Him. So I love you all and I encourage you all to give it up because, man, this is not what you want. He's looking for a holy people. People that will serve him. People that will worship him. And spirit. He's looking for holy people. Deliverance. There's power in the name of Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I surrender my life to you because he, he loves me. Oh, how he loves me, and he loves you too. He loves you.